Okay, so one of the worst things, maybe the very worst thing, when you're doing a vlog on a certain topic in a certain site, and you find out that it's closed. And I asked, and it's not going to be open for the next few months. What a bummer. But hey, to every minus, there's also a plus. So shalom everyone. Welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger. And this time, completing the series of following Jesus in Jerusalem, I'm trying to find out the place of the assembly of the disciples as presented by Luke. After his appearance at Emmaus, it tells us that he returned to Jerusalem and appeared to the disciples. That place is probably the same place where the early Christian church, now led by James, used to assemble. And the key question is to where could that be? The New Testament does not provide any hint for its location. It could have been anywhere in Jerusalem, but most Christian tradition place it here on Mount Zion. In fact, right behind me, this grand church built in the early 20th century is the German Catholic establishment that is actually combining two events at that site. The place of the early church where also the Pentecost took place as well as the place where Mary fell asleep and hence its official name Dormition, the Dormir in Sion, the falling asleep on Mount Zion. However, it is closed. It is closed for quite a few months and I was hoping that by the time I get to this chapter they will reopen but they just told me, sorry Danny, it's going to take at least one more month. However, that's the Catholic tradition, and I'm super excited now to tell you and about to present to you the Greek tradition on this location. It turns out that there is another place at the southern end of Mount Zion, which I heard by chance from one of the tourists I was guiding, that he said, Daddy, did you know that the real place is actually there? The first century church is actually in a different location. And I told him, okay, that sounds intriguing. Let's go and check it out. And indeed, I, I inquired about this. And the Greek Orthodox Church maintains, it's apparently an old tradition also established in the early 20th century, that the relocation is over there. And of course, hearing of this, I wanted to get in. But guess what? Since I am aware of that site. It has never been open to anyone. I've just never seen it open. But then, for a good friend, Cindy Brandon, thank you so much for arranging this. I got the phone number of the guy that is representing the church here, and he has the keys. And he just opened it. Let's take a look. Okay, we are walking towards the very southern end now of Mount Zion. Bethlehem is already two ridges behind us. This is a nice green prime location, by the way, that is property of the Greek Orthodox Church. It used to be a place for uh, recreational activity. There's actually an unused uh, soccer field there in the back. But this building, which I've always been aware of, only recently was my attention drawn to it as a place that is actually quite, quite significant by some uh, parts of the Christian world. Okay, this very unimposing cement structure, always, always locked. But do you see it? I've preset it to open. Moni's there in the distance. He doesn't want to be on the camera. And so here I am going in. <laughs> So what do we have here? Even before I managed to get in, I could see through the bars that the building has here um, steps leading uh, towards the bottom. And it's very interesting that it has one flight on this side, one flight on this side, and such flight of steps are very typical to the time of Jesus, to the time of the temple, and are identified as ritual baths, a mikveh. Usually they are smaller, but we have seen also very big mikvehs for, <clears throat> you know, more like public use or the use of a big family or something of that sort. Here, 
Also, the divider seems to be steps. So when I saw this, I started thinking that maybe, maybe, this is a very specific type of mikveh where the people would go in. In my opinion, it was mostly priests who would go down, immerse their bodies somewhere at this level. And indeed, you can see that there is still plaster here. And when they are going down, why isn't the camera tilting? Here we go. When they are going down, they are unpure. Okay? So maybe they're going down from here. Once they are pure, perhaps it was a wooden ladder here, so you could go up in the middle, but in an elevated way, as you are pure and ready to go to the temple. Okay? This is at least what I've made of this. But it turns out that there's another layer. There is another, maybe earlier mikveh here. This all seems quite puzzling. Of the Jewish uh, ritual bathing context activity that took place here. But at a later stage, it was carved even deeper. Okay, and this is what the Greek Orthodox Church uncovered in the early 20th century. And it suggested to associate it with the early church, with the place of the Pentecost. This, in their belief, is the place where the Holy Spirit descended and made all of the disciples to speak in many languages to fulfill the will of Jesus that his message will be delivered to the ends of the earth. And what we have here, for one thing, is an apse, a niche, but it's facing east which is typical to churches. I'm not sure if it's that ancient, and uh, the, the column here is definitely old, but perhaps this was installed by the church. But my great fascination was noticing that there is indeed an underground section over here. Let me switch to the better lenses. And it seems that someone at some point or a group of people have altered this subterranean section maybe maybe to convene in a private way without being noticed after all the early christians were kind of an underground a religious underground and if the the understanding of the site is correct and here you have a cistern that was recognized as close to the mikveh so it was connected through this section and here you have like a mystery tunnel <laughs> okay let's turn on the light let's crawl in you see the plaster on the wall on both sides what is it telling us <laughs> we have even some spider waves waiting for us and if you tilt up you see that here too there is a cistern so this was undoubtedly a water cistern but somebody or some group of people at, the, at some stage decided to break through this cistern connect it to the one over here and the connection has no plaster so it's no more going to be holding any water and connect it to the stairway. The former mikveh is now the stairway leading into it. All the circumstantial evidence is quite, quite interesting. And it is possible that a group of people wanted to use this underground space and altering it a bit to be more accommodating for uh, not just one or two people but for a group of people who want to perform their rites their religious ceremonies their, to, to, to speak about their faith in a free way okay I don't have proof but I must say that this tradition of the Greek Orthodox Church is very compelling and furthermore Moni told me that actually on the Greek Orthodox Pentecost which is a slightly different date compared to the Catholic one, they do assemble here. I am definitely going to return and document that event, which had been about 
two months. And then if you're still a bit uh, hesitant about my conclusion or my assumption of this site, let me just add another interesting fact, and that is the fact that in 2018, like two years before the pandemic, there was some archaeological dig conducted in the field over here by a German expedition. I don't know if it was necessarily a salvage excavation or if it was done, sorry about all the noise, or if it was done for uh, any development that they were planning here. But lo and behold, oh, a ladder. Don't fall, Danny. You got a mission from God. <laughs> um, here, in this very space, uh, Muni showed me the pictures. Now it's all covered up. They found right here a Byzantine era church. Now we already know it as a pattern from quite a few other sites that when you have an ancient church, especially a Byzantine one, it means often and especially in areas like Jerusalem that someone wanted to mark this spot. Someone believed of a certain sanctity of this place. It's not just a place of assembly, not in Jerusalem. It might be an indication that they identified indeed the first century church, the place, the Domus Ecclesia, the place of the assembly of the early Christians before the Romans came and destroyed everything, right here, right on this part of Mount Zion. Isn't that exciting? I'm really, really thrilled to be able to come here. Moni Todaraba! <laughs> oh, and my camera is wind jammed. Hold on. Okay, bye for now.